All right, what's going on, guys? Jacob over here coming to you with my reactions to Packers versus Lions. Pretty rough one for the Packers tonight. They drop it 34 to 20. Uh, Lions got out to a 27 to 3 halftime lead. Things improved in the second half, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Uh, the Packers fall two scores short. Um, there's a lot to unpack from this one. I mean, there's definitely more bad than good, but there is also some silver linings as well, to be honest with you. Um, first and foremost, um, this team continues to, for some reason, be unable to come out of the gate in games, like, especially big games. Like, this was a pretty big game with, you know, I know it's early in the season, but the division lead on the line, and the Packers came out flat again for what seems like the millionth time under Matt LaFleur. Like, I'm not calling for Matt LaFleur to be fired at this point because I still think he deserves the benefit of the doubt, at least for this season, but it's really becoming a problem in Green Bay right now. I mean, I mean, how do you continue to come into games unprepared, players getting just, like, beaten off the line of scrimmage time and time again? I mean, the Packers' defensive front and their offensive line, both sides were getting absolutely annihilated in the first half. It wasn't even close. Like... You, you win games in the trenches, and the Packers were just embarrassing on both sides in the first half of that game. Like, I just, I don't know what to say when it's like every single time there's a big game, the Packers come out totally flat like that. Totally flat. I, I We've seen it in the playoffs many times. We've seen it in late season games. We saw it tonight. It's got to be better. It, Matt LaFleur has to figure out a way to get his guys you know, ready to play for games like this, because the Packers, you know, if they come out of that, the gates with, you know, even a halfway decent first half, they could win this game, you know, they, they played way better in the second half, way better, they scored 17 points, they only gave up 10, they won the, they won the second half 17 to 10, Jordan Love played a lot better, the offensive line blocked a lot better, although that's not really saying much considering how bad they were in the first half, um, the defense as a whole played a lot better, why couldn't that have been the way they came out of the gates in the first half? Maybe they would have had a chance to win, but, um, I mean, yeah, the, like I said, the second half way better than the first half, um, but still, you know, the offensive line without Elton Jenkins, without David Bakhtiari, it's just a mess on the left side anyways, at least, you know. And even then, Josh Myers, John Runyon didn't have great games, like very poor games for their standard, especially John Runyon. I was surprised to see how much he struggled in this game as well. Uh, Zach Tom was all right from what I saw anyways, but that left side of the line was Rasheed Walker and uh, Royce Newman annihilated I mean there was no chance and to be perfectly honest with you I don't really know why Royce Newman continues to start in the absence of Elton Jenkins I mean I think Sean Ryan on the bench is way a way better guy to put in that spot because Royce Newman has shown us time and time again that he's not a very good offensive lineman he's not good you know what you're getting with him at this point and I don't know why they continue to throw him out there but um that definitely affected uh, the performance of Jordan Love, I think. I think Jordan Love, all things considered, did an okay job tonight. In the first half, he was not very good. He missed some throws that he should have made. In the second half, he was much, much better, and he gave them an outside chance of winning the game. Yeah, There was a point where I was thinking, oh, man, are the Packers coming back in this one? You know, they had cut the lead to 27-17, to and Jordan Love was the guy who got them down there both times to score. He he played a really good second half, in my opinion. Um, of course, the two interceptions are not ideal, although I would like to point out the first one came on a tipped pass. The second one came on Romeo Dobbs running the wrong route. Um, or for some, I don't know why Romeo Dobbs did that, by the way. Like, he had an in route that he was open on and that Jordan Love was clearly throwing to him. It would have been an easy catch for a first down, and he just decided to turn up field right as Jordan Love released the ball, and it was right there for the Lions taking. So I don't know what the heck was going on with that. Some sort of miscommunication. I want to say, like, Romeo Dobbs broke downfield because he thought that Love was, like, going to escape the pocket and try to make something happen. But, like, he was right there. He was open. He should have just continued on his route, and it would have been a first down. But 
Um, Quay Walker, uh, on the whole, a very good game. Unfortunately, he cost them a chance at a comeback. Not going to say he cost them the win, obviously. There was very... There was very little chance the Packers would have won the game, even if he didn't do what he did. But, I mean, the jumping over the line, the, which is an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and and the, the Lions had gotten the field goal, and then they ended up getting a touchdown because it gave them the first down. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't really know why that's a rule to begin with, but still, you got to be smarter than that. you got to be smarter than that. Um you know, maybe he didn't know the rule. Maybe that's more on, you know, Rich Passaccia for not, you know, making that clear in, like, special team meetings and stuff. Uh, it could definitely be a case of that. Don't want to pin it all on Quay because, as a whole, Quay Walker played really well tonight. He really did play well tonight. Um, and he's an incredible talent, and he's going to be a great football player for the Packers. You just wish that his mistakes weren't so timely or untimely, I should say. Like that, that was a really big moment in that game where the Packers had gotten the stop and they could they got the ball back and there was still enough time for you know you score a touchdown, get another stop, score another touchdown, you win the game. There there was still an opportunity for that to happen and that was just a backbreaker that you know that penalty was called and uh, it's unfortunate, but. Um, yeah, uh, Rashawn Gary, he was definitely in there a lot, um, with pressures. I mean, the dude continues to be an absolute force. Uh, personally, I would like to see his snap count start going up a little more, because I still only see him on third downs and other big situations, but, uh, as a whole, he, he looks the part. He looks like Rashawn Gary again. I mean, uh, you know, there was a little bit of concern for me that, you know, a pass rusher might not return fully from an ACL injury, but he still looks like a monster, so, uh, yeah, there are definitely some positives in this, and looking forward at the Packers' remaining schedule for until Thanksgiving, the next time they play Detroit, they could definitely go into that game anywhere from 5-4 and four to 7-2, and two, in my opinion. They could definitely do that. I mean, they got Vegas next week, then they have their bye, then they have Denver, then they have Minnesota, um, and I think the Chargers and the Steelers are in there too. Um, there's, but the combined record of those teams is like, I think they have five wins combined for the five or six teams we play. So um, there's definitely a chance that the Packers have a good record going into Detroit and that the division is once again, the division lead is once again on the line. So there is a very real chance that they can have that situation play out. So everything the Packers want to do this season is still on the table. And we have to keep in mind it is, in a way, a re rebuilding year for the Packers. It really is. And, you know, whether or not they make the playoffs or not really shouldn't matter. What matters more is seeing what you might have with these guys. And so far, through four games, there is a lot of potential with this group. There is a lot of potential with this group. And you, ha you can see that, you know, they're learning. They're making mistakes, but they're learning. And that's really the important thing. You know, Jordan Love, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, uh, Quay Walker, um, I'd love to see Eric Stokes back on the field, not sure when he's coming back, but Zach Tom, you know, all the young guys on this team, they're all learning together, they're all losing and winning games together, they're going to be better for this game, they're going to be better as a team, learning from this game, I would hope, so, anyways guys, that's all I gotta say in this video, uh, I'll definitely be back with my reactions Monday night after the Broncos game, or no, the Ra the Raiders game. They play in uh, the Raiders. The Broncos are the week after the bye week. But uh, I'll be back with my reactions after that. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching and go Pack Go.